afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for constantly participating in our Open Office Hour series. Today, we're delighted to do a partner spotlight on our uh, good friends of Next, uh, of Next Service. They're going to run the entire webinar. We'll be here to answer any questions and, and help facilitate this meeting. But, and with that said, I'm going to transfer it over to Ivan Sates, who runs uh, business development here in the U.S. for Next Service. Ivan, it's all yours. Fantastic. Thank you, Alejandro. All right, team. Well, happy to be on here. Excited to share more about Next Service with you. Just for a quick introduction of the team that you'll be speaking with today, myself, I'm Ivan Zaitz. I'm the account executive um, based in North America out of our, our Dallas hub here. Um, and then joining me today and who will be navigating through our demonstration is one of our senior solution consultants, uh, Ben Castles. Hi, everybody. Ben Castles uh, coming to you from Toronto. Looking forward to showing you the software. Fantastic. Thanks, Ben. All right, so I want to kick things off by giving you a little bit of a background on us, kind of understand how we came to be and really how we relate to NetSuite and the field service ecosystem. Um, I like to start off something that's rather unique to Next Service is that we're actually both native and exclusive to NetSuite, which our customers appreciate as well as I'm sure our dev team, uh, because that means we don't bifurcate our focus or compromise quality of integration, we simply are able to provide a better and stronger solution. Now we'll touch on uh, native and the importance of that a little bit later, but that exclusivity, um, really it's, it's, uh, it's, we wanted to be a master of how to leverage NetSuite. It's such a powerful uh, enterprise resource planner. And so we really focus on just augmenting that and extending that functionality into the field. So we actually started from a parent company, which was a wholesale distributor of capital machinery, and they had their own share of pains and requirements that weren't fully fulfilled by core NetSuite alone or really any ERP for that matter. And third party supplemental applications that were supposed to handle field service on their own, well, they, they simply flopped, right? So they did what, um, what a business might do if they can't find something that's an existing solution on the market, they built it and they knew what they didn't need, so they knew what they had to build, and they built it the right way, which was on platform, so that everything could be under one roof, right? They patched the holes. Uh, NetSuite seemed to like the product that they made and actually gave the team a development award and have since productized it, and, uh, and I guess uh, maybe the cliche term, but uh, you know, the rest was history, right? So now we support 3,000 plus mobile users globally over I mean, at least 50 different micro verticals in the service industry. And now to this native, right? These NetSuite awards are, they're neat, they're lovely, right? But the badge that we are most proud of is this one here. Um, our product being native means uh, there are a lot of benefits and built-in perks uh, just by virtue of being on platform, right? And so you're gonna see the, the checklist here, but but just to give you the highlights, right? Um, what that means is we're using all of the same forms, fields, everything's under one roof. So when we're thinking about, well, boy, would it be nice if I didn't have to reference one system or another and do this back and forth and really just ponder over, well, what, what is my source of truth? That problem is eliminated because everything is under one roof. It's all referencing a single database, right? And this is important because it means that we're reducing the amount of human error, that risk that we constantly have anytime that you're asked to double key something in, right? So maybe just for kind of context of field service, you have a technician out in the field and they're recording their job information and now you have to prepare to be able to bill something. They hand you the piece of paper and you have to hope that it's completed, right? That's the first obstacle. And then we have to hope that it's, rekeyed in accurately. And these are just big problems, right? They, they start from small things here and they scale up, especially as a team tends to grow. So by being on platform and being able to record information in the system at the time of it occurring, lower, lower risk of error, single source of truth, the information is real time. So what you're referencing, you know is going to be accurate and you know is actionable information. 
right? The list goes on, really. And then some of the focal areas here, these are the broad strokes or the pillars really of where we've been able to successfully augment NetSuite's functionality. And the name of the game here is really what we call field mobility, which means that you can rest assured with the information that you'll have at your disposal that you are always sending the right person to the right job at the right time. It's your ability to empower your technicians to be the experts that you know that you hired by giving them all the information that they need while they're on site. And the ability to record the details of what is happening on site in real time back in the NetSuite. That's a powerful tool to be able to have. Right, the constant thing that our team here is time and again is, well, I wanna be able to make sure that my technicians or my team in the field can focus on the job that they were hired to do. We wanna make this simple for them yet effective. It needs to be intuitive, but it needs to be comprehensive, right? It needs to be able to pull all the information they need. So just taking a look at some of these individual pillars and how they break down here. Onboarding management, right? That's the ability to manage your team proactively, coordinate, monitor, and automate customer service requests. That's schedule and dispatch piece, right? That's your at a glance, where's my team? What are they working on? Are they keeping on task or are we falling behind? You made promises to your customers. This is where you're able to see, are we keeping up on those? And not only that is visualizing the schedule, but it's the ability to make the changes that you need in real time as well. And we make it nice and easy for you in a drag and drop format. You need to move a job over to another day because your customer called up and said that they're unable to have you on site today. No problem. You need to move an entire day's worth of jobs over multiple team members, no problem, right? These are not just aesthetic changes on a schedule board. These are you updating your records. Again, making sure that you're, you're reducing the amount of touches, reducing risk of human error. Let's automate what we can. That asset management piece is very important to us as well, right? And it, and it kind of goes back to the sending the right person to the right job Asset management, we want you to be the expert of your customer, right? Uh, it's, it's being able to really know truly who you're communicating with. And the big piece of that is, well, if I have a customer, I want to be able to know what it is that they have on their site that we work on. I want to be able to know what services we've done for them in the past and track that history. These are things that are going to have tremendous benefits down the line when we're able to use that information, leverage it for either upsell opportunities, or maybe we're just trying to reduce the amount of time it takes for us to conduct a repair, right? Let's become more efficient with this. Now looking down at the bottom here, inventory and returns, keeping track of real time inventory in your warehouse on your truck or van. That's a huge pain point for a lot of folks, right? Not a lot of systems are able to do that effectively or in real time, we can show you that. It's a pretty powerful tool to be able to have when you can now use inventory on a site and have that deduct from your inventory in real time. And then of course, what good is all this information if we can't report on it? NetSuite has an amazing reporting engine. And so we want to be able to take the information that you're collecting and measure, track benchmarks and, and ultimately use that to be able to grow your service industry, your service business. All right, so these are the pillars that we've really been able to build up. And these are some of the impacts we've been able to have or we've been able to really move the needle. Now I'll take a breath here and, and let you uh, take a peek through for those that are watching it in real time or recorded. Um, take a look at some of these outcomes. They tend to speak for themselves, right? Uh, increased utilization. Our customers are finding that their techs are being able to accomplish more jobs. And what does that mean? It means that they're collecting more revenue. They're being more efficient your team members become profitable for your business. We find there's a time when you're growing your team that without the proper system, sometimes the added headcount in theory should be able to improve your revenue and the amount of profit you're gaining. But without a good process, you end up having to hire more headcount just to be able to manage a greater team. So all you've done is grown in size, you haven't grown in profitability. We're able to take down those administrative tasks and be able to give you that power back. So as you grow, 
everything is growing, right? We're improving, not just growing for the sake of growing. The reduction in admin costs. I mean, simply there, our customers are spending less time tracking down missing information or re-entering job tickets because frankly, the work that they're receiving is simply done right the first time, it's completed. We're able to offer enforced workflows so that way we're, we're removing any compliance issues. Right? There's, there's built-in accountability with the system that you're going to be able to see today. Jobs are being completed faster because technicians are better prepared. Right? Simple things like being able to provide them access to manuals or that service history that I was mentioning before. Specific site information. In and out. Right? That's, what we, that's what we want. That makes your customers happy and that's going to make you happy as well. And then inventory leakage. My goodness. I mean, that, just consider that patched up. Right. We've had some customers actually realize a full return on investment on that alone. Right. Just by being able to track inventory being used at the time of it actually being used. Right. These are some of the tricky areas that we've been able to, to help bridge in terms of functionality. And, and again, the list goes on. Some customers take advantage of other pieces um, more than more than other customers might. It really depends on the industry or the micro vertical that you fall within and, and how big is the problem that you're experiencing now. Regardless, you'll have the tools to be able to succeed here. And now before I hand it off to Ben to actually um, walk you through a scenario to give you more of a, a visual picture of how all these pieces come into play, I just wanted to show this slide here to, to really nail home the idea that all of this is truly happening under one system, right? You're going to see a couple different interfaces, our, our schedule board and our, our mobile interface, and you're going to say, there's no way this is NetSuite, right? This has to be a different application. You are always, and I'll re reassure this now, you are always going to be in NetSuite while this is happening. All right. Now, Ben is going to walk us through a scenario here. Uh, we're going to walk you through a couple different roles, right? So the key roles that you're going to see are going to be your back end administrative function. So that's the hat that is saying, I have a job that I need to create against a customer. And I need to take the information um, that's important for me to put in front of my technician so they can succeed in their job. I need to be able to assign that, see who's available, and make sure that I've informed the technician where and when they need to go somewhere, right? Simply put. And then we're going to change hats and we're going to show you, well, what does that look like? What's a day in the life look like for my team member out in the field? When they pull up their phone or tablet or whatever they have their application on, uh, how do they complete their job? So these are the roles that we'll be primarily covering. All right, Ben, um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing here and I'll let you share your demo environment. Thank you so much, Ivan. Thanks for that lovely intro setting the stage nicely for, uh, for my part of this. And uh, let's see, are you seeing my NetSuite screen now? Sure are. And uh, okay. So everybody, uh, Ivan talked about a lot of great features in NetSuite and I'm going to touch on a few more of these. Uh, so firstly, being built for NetSuite, being 100% on the platform is a real advantage for us. Uh, it means that all your information is under one roof. It's in NetSuite. Everything that Next Service touches in terms of data and information, it's all in NetSuite. So uh, because we're on platform, we get to use NetSuite's inventory, all of their transactions, their, their quotes, their estimates, their sales orders, the invoices, the inventory transfers, all of that stuff we access natively. Not only that, we get to use the CRM, all of the employees and the case management system as well. Now, because everything is under that one roof, we get to use NetSuite's reminder system. So that's what you're seeing on the board here. I've got reminders and my dashboard is set up with KPIs for field service. I've got expiring skills by technicians. I even have service tools and, and maybe my overdue tasks are showing on a dashboard, right? So the important thing here to remember is to get the information required for a certain role in front of them in real time. 
it's a 360 degree view of your field service business. And you can imagine from a management point of view, having that real time information allows you to make better decisions in real time. Uh, you're able to fit in an extra emergency job or maybe uh, move a lower priority job for tomorrow to the day after so you can fit in your uh, you know, customer who's really having a lot of pain that you need to solve. Okay, so uh, I'm going to walk through a scenario here. We're gonna go to a customer called Chris Peterson. Okay, so I'm opening the Chris Peterson record here. Uh, we used NetSuite's search at the top there for that feature, but I already had the record open here. This is a standard NetSuite CRM record. The difference here is that our bundle has installed this next service tab up the top and you can see I've got this next service tab under the customer which shows all of the locations and all of the items that we've installed. Now for this demonstration I've picked uh, an HVAC scenario which is fairly common and HVAC has certainly picked up uh, uh, a lot of steam recently uh, with filtering air being so important nowadays. Okay, so we're gonna go, uh, the, the customer's on the phone and the customer says, I've got uh, a unit at my South Dakota White River location. Okay, um, is it your carrier infinity? Yes, it is. Uh, so we're gonna open up that record. We can see it in the list, we can open it up. Okay, alternatively, if they knew the serial number we could have typed that into the search up the top here and found the record pertaining to it. So it's really easy to get to the data that you need. Uh, now this asset record has make and model and serial numbers, customers and where on site it is. We might even have some internal notes such as uh, it seems to require gasket replacement fairly often. I think I'm alluding to what we're going to be doing in the field here potentially. Okay, so we're on the phone with our customer. We're going to create a case record. Again, guys, this is a standard NetSuite record and we're using it to roll a truck to this customer. Okay, so uh, by clicking on project here, you can see the first line there. It's saying warranty parts and labor with a start and an end date. This this air conditioning unit is under warranty. The system is telling us that. I didn't have to go searching for it. Because our system has the project record in there, which is the warranty, it links it and it displays it to us. It saves you the time having to figure it out. So this is obviously a warranty call because it's still valid and it's broken. So uh, it's gonna be a break, fix job. And you might see some of the other jobs there. These would be your jobs, not the ones that I'm showing you. That's part of our deployment. Who's the contact on site? We're gonna go with uh, Chris here. You can see it pulled through his email and his phone number. Okay, uh, we're going to roll a truck, which is a site visit, and we're going to assign that to, let's say we'll assign that to me today until say 5 p.m. Oh gosh, there we go, 5 p.m. We're gonna put a little bit of extra information in here. We're gonna say, bring your ID. And uh, you know, something really critical, beware of dog, right? Something that might save your technician's life for sure. Uh, a little bit of case details. Uh, we're gonna say inspect and fix the AC, okay? Uh, so we're going to save that record and we're going to move on to our schedule board. So we're pushing that record over to our schedule board and guys, this is built in NetSuite. Can you see the URL? So the way we get to that uh, is we click on the scheduler and run, and it'll open this scheduler. I had it already open just for uh, the sake of speed here. Now, this is my Northern region. You can see we've got quite a few jobs and uh, we've got the map open down the bottom, which shows us the location of our technicians. Here's Jamila. Here's Zoe, and we've got Benoit across the river. This is my record right here, and you can see I've got a number of skills. We can filter those skills, or the technicians who have the skills, rather. So show me everybody who's an electrician. And you can see that it narrowed down. Uh, so because we're able to filter by skills, or who can drive a forklift, for instance, we can assign a job uh, to the correct person with the correct skill. This can make sure that your first time to fix metric is higher or that you uh, 
reduce the number of truck rolls. Okay, this is all part of that efficiency that our system uh, gives our customers. And actually on average, your technicians will be 15% more efficient. You'll be able to fit in an extra job every week. Imagine what that can do for your bottom line at the end of each month or year. Okay, this is my northern region. I also have a south region. I'm clicking to the south. Can you see how all the jobs changed and the technicians changed? In fact, they're located in completely different areas, mostly around Dallas. And uh, we've got a technician up here in the Colorado area. So you can have different dispatchers handling different locations. And of course, these are configurable. Here's my southeast team. Here's my west team. Okay, we're going back to the north just because that's where I've got the most jobs and uh, that's where the job we just created is located as well. Let's have a look at the status of our jobs. So part of you being able to make excellent decisions is being able to tell what jobs we've already completed, which jobs are in progress, and maybe which jobs haven't started yet. So you can see we actually haven't started any of the jobs for Thursday the 24th, that's today. And of course, we haven't started any for tomorrow. Now, let's talk a little bit about the colors on the board. We have our low priority blue jobs, our medium priority yellow, and of course, our high priority red jobs. We can also filter by job type. So show me all my deliveries versus my pickups or my site visits. Right, so we, the, the goal here is to use filtering to make it really quick for you to see the information that you need to see. A couple other things I wanna show you. We've got a one day view, which really narrows down what you can see. And we can go all the way to uh, a two week or maybe even a one month view if you need to see uh, across a greater time period what's going on with your business. Okay, typically we do uh, job assignments across a three day period. So if somebody's absent for one day, uh, well, suppose uh, Jamila, suppose she's not going to be available on Friday. We need to reschedule her work. I just dragged a box around those jobs. I can drag them down. I can assign them to somebody who's available or maybe I need to uh, you know, give them to Jamila on Saturday since she's unavailable Friday you get the option of assigning your work via drag and drop. In fact, we can even drag a, drop, uh, a box around an entire day for your whole team and reassign all of that work there, okay? And we've got scenario planning. So if you're not happy with how that looks, we're just simply gonna roll that back. There we go. So here's the job we're going to do. It's that break fix for Chris Peterson. We're looking at the carrier infinity. It's under warranty, okay? So we're gonna go on site and investigate that. Now, I'm gonna pop open my mobile. You can see I've got this mobile icon here. This populates or opens up the mobile. Um, now, I, I often have my camera on for these demos. Uh, unfortunately, not this time, but we often show uh, a, uh, my iPad. Uh, we support Android, iOS, laptops, desktops, anything with an HTML browser. So it's really easy for you to uh, choose a device for your team to use, or they can use bring your own device, okay? Here's what that device would look like in iPad format. Okay, so on the left here, we've got my agenda view of all the jobs. So that's organized by date and time. And this is the job we're doing on the 24th, the Chris Peterson job. We've got mapping on the right because you guessed it, we are in fact sending back latitude and longitude into NetSuite so you can map where your technicians are in real time. We've got geofencing. So when your technician starts the job, if they are within half a mile of the job site, we're going to record a timestamp. So that allows you to find out who was actually on site when they started a job versus perhaps on the couch. Let's click into that job right there. Oh, I should also mention we've got offline mode. So if you're in the country or basement, you can still have all your jobs cached. You're still going to be able to record all your taps and clicks and important information, and it'll be saved back to NetSuite automatically. Okay. Uh, hey Ben, is it possible to zoom in just here. a hair? Sorry, go ahead, is there a question? Uh, ben, is it possible to zoom in just a hair? Uh, 
I don't know if I can. Let me uh, unshare and I'll share in a different method and that'll, uh, that'll make it a little bit easier. How does that sound? Yeah, no worries. Um, if, if, that's, if that's what we're um, up with there, that, that should be fine, but I figure it might be a little bit easier for folks to see if it's uh, a, little bit, a little bit more zoomed in. Perfect. Uh, let me know when you can see this. Uh, this is Perfect. actually my iPad now, okay? <laughs> so you can see there's a portrait landscape mode. Um, actually, would it be possible to uh, turn cameras on or is that not an option? I think that's controlled at your side. You, you, you can turn cameras on. Um, can you try? I, I don't know that I can, I don't know how to okay. control. Uh, uh, let's not worry about it now. I'll continue on. Okay, uh, so I've got my agenda view here and we're gonna click into this Chris Peterson job. Is this a better size for you? That looks fantastic then. Perfect, perfect. Okay, let's talk about workflow. So you can see we've got a big green start button. Really easy for your technicians to see and to hit. There we go, we've got a timestamp, 2.31 p.m. Uh, beside that button, you can see the complete button, which is inactive. It will be active when we've worked through the workflow that we've assigned to the job. So that means I need to do this job safety assessment, which you can see four tabs down and uh, record some time and finally do the sign off down the bottom. These are required steps that you get to set for your jobs. And it means that it doesn't matter if you're sending your most experienced or your newest employee, they're going to do the same steps in the same order or they can't complete the job. Okay, so where are we going or what are we servicing? It's this uh, HVAC unit, it's an infinity. You can see we've got make and model and we've got a status there. We even have a service manual here, okay? So I pulled this off the web and I, I linked to it. The important part here, guys, is that we get to put the important information in front of your text. You can see the location on site, left side of the deck in the back. That's important if they have multiple or, you know, maybe you can put a gate code or that all important beware of dog information into there. Internal notes the customer doesn't see. Maybe you've got asset notes that they do, okay? Let's do, oh, before we get there, uh, the customer contact. We can call Chris directly from the device here. Hey, we're gonna be early, we're gonna be late. We have job history. Have we done any work here in the past? Oh, we've had a job from September 1st. And this was done by one of our other technicians, Andrew Sleeth, and we can see the actions he took. He fixed the issue, replaced the filter, and a gasket, beware of dog. So that's where we got that beware of dog information in the first place. Okay, and history also helps reduce your truck rolls. Your technicians can review what was done, who did it, maybe the inventory used, that can help them make important decisions. And really, they're also not going to have to ask the customer the same question that you ask every time you go on site, right? Because it's at your fingertips. We, our standard package comes with two checklists. This is an example of one. Uh, this is our job safety assessment, okay? So uh, do we have to turn the electricity off before we start poking this thing? Do we need to put a, a face shield or wear gloves before we start using it? These are questions that you will define. Um, you can define the type, the number, and we can get them onto the mobile. The data is going to save back into NetSuite. And watch this. I can't save it. You can see that stop in the top right. When I put my technician signature, now it turns to a green checkbox. I'm able to save it. So that's our field level workflow enforcement, okay? Or signature capture is required on the job safety assessment. Uh, a lot of my customers use a job safety assessment similar to that. And uh, they tell us that they have 100% compliance because it's required. You can imagine what 100% compliance on a safety form can do for your insurance premiums for your technicians in the field. I've got another one here. It's a generic job checklist, okay? A little bit of health precautions. Are you wearing a mask? License and registration recorded. Did the item fail or pass? We can add a before picture. So I'm gonna add a, you know, a beware of dog type picture here. Uh, we can add a picture of the actual unit as well. All right, there's the, uh, the one we are working on. Before and after pictures are really quite powerful for proving that you did the work. You can 
show these to a customer and then get them to sign off, you're going to get paid quicker. We're recording some time here on the job. It's important to record time for those time and materials jobs especially, but even under warranty, you want the cost of the labor to be against the job, so we need to record it. We might want to record items out of the truck or the van. So let's see what we've got here. I'm searching for uh, a gasket, right? So we've inspected it. We found that there's a, a, a gasket requiring a placing. Maybe we also, these are all the items in my truck or van. I need to replace the filter as well, okay? So I'm adding those two parts to the job. It's decrementing the quantity out of my van in real time. This means you're going to have less leakage. The, you know, the items in your locations in the field that mysteriously disappear. I've had some customers say five figures on leakage because they track it on our mobile. Okay, so that was the sales order. And now we're going to do our sign off here. I'm gonna use my voice for this. We completed the inspection, found that the gasket and filter required replacing, full stop. Uh, we replaced it, the unit is functioning at full capacity now, the customer is happy. Okay, some nice information there to capture, that'll be in history next time. And here's the part where we get the customer to read the terms and conditions down the bottom. They check that box and then we get their signature. Um, Mr. Hank, can you please review my job safety? Can you see the job checklist with the before and after pictures? I'm showing you this because I want to get your sign off that we completed the work and uh, Chris signs it. Oh, that's terrible. Let's, uh, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, there we go. There's Chris and now we need my technician signature and that's oh, terrible again. Can you see the complete button? We're able to finish this one now. Uh, the eagle-eyed might have noticed that we've got follow-up tasks. If we couldn't finish it, if we needed to order parts, we can accommodate that. We can do um, daily check-ins and check-outs for uh, that time clock. We can do expenses. We can order inventory. We can receive inventory. There's a lot that I'm not showing you on this mobile. Uh, and I'm going to go back into NetSuite. We're going to finish up the demonstration with uh, a report showing all the information that we captured. And then we're going to look a little bit at profitability, okay? So we're going back to the schedule board. This is that job that we just did together, Chris Peterson. So I'm gonna click on this button and this will download a PDF of all of that nice information we saved using the mobile. It's already in NetSuite and we're just gonna pull it together using a PDF template and this can be sent to the customer in real time. It seems I've got a connection issue. Hopefully that isn't, it's still loading. So we'll just give that a second here. Here we go. And that is just teeny. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Oh, too big, of course. Okay, so this is the job we just did for Chris Peterson. You can see the actions taken are the words that I use with, uh, when I was using my voice there. Here's the labor we recorded, eight hours. Here's the gasket and the filter we added onto that sales order. You can see the amounts on there. And of course, this is a template that can be edited. We don't have to have the items or the labor. We definitely don't have to have the cost of the parts there if you don't want the customer to see that. Here are the signatures, and this customer signature is super important because it means the customer is happy with the work you did, and you've got proof that they're happy. Imagine how many arguments that can resolve if you have the customer signature. In fact, if you send this type of document along with, say, the before and after pictures proving the work that you did, imagine how much faster you're gonna get paid when you invoice the customer. Just leave that hanging for a second there while I switch screens. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the invoicing side here. So we're gonna go into the case and all of that information is in NetSuite. I showed adding a gasket and I showed adding um, that filter on the job. 
and you can see we've got some time and we've got the transaction unbilled. So let's go to the sales order here and we're going to turn that sales order into uh, an invoice. Okay, they're the two items from Ben's van. They're already fulfilled because we use them in the field and we're just gonna build remaining. This is going to create that invoice and then we can accept payment on it. It's your standard accounts receivable processes from here, okay? The important thing to note is that we're using NetSuite's functionality and all the items that you use in the field are captured. So you're going to be able to charge the customer for them. And if you're not charging them because it's under warranty, then you're going to be able to book the cost against the job, which will give you that nice profitability. Okay, so we're going back to the customer record here and you can see we've got this profitability report button. This is just standard NetSuite. We've added a button here to show profitability across all the jobs. So this could be all the warranty records, all the call outs. Okay, so you can see I've got a, I do a lot of demos with Chris Peterson. He's got a, accommodations all across the land. And the one that we're looking for, oh, there we go. I saw it, South Dakota. Let me make this a little bit bigger because it's nice to be able to see things. Um, so White River is what we're looking for. Here we go, South Dakota. You can see we had an item fulfillment which cost us $5. Uh, that's how much the inventory cost. And we invoiced him for $110. So that gives you the profitability. Of course, all the, the profitability for all the jobs rolls up so you can get that and you can find out how profitable your customers are. All of this feeds directly into NetSuite, of course, so your dashboards will be updated. You might have reminders to approve the sales orders or to turn them into invoices or all of the things that you need to do to manage your field service business will be in your reminders on your dashboards. All right, I think I've shown everything that I'm, I'm here to show. Um, one last word on functionality that I'm not showing you. Uh, we have preventative maintenance or program maintenance. So you can book in daily, monthly, weekly, recurring jobs for your customers. Uh, you can attach a sales order that repeats or a billing schedule on a sales order so you can bill them on a regular cadence as well. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to stop sharing now and turn it back over to Ivan. Thank you, Ben. Fantastic demo, per usual. <laughs> well, last thing that I wanted to uh, review before passing it back over to Alejandro for, for some kind of closing statements here, um, I wanted to take a minute and just kind of review what we saw and then reflect on that through some of our case studies with our current customers here. And I'll, I'll, I'll primarily allow you to take some time to look through, um, <clears throat> oh, apologies here, to, to look through some of these points on here. This is kind of a little bit of our brag page, but you're able to see Ben walk through these different processes and how he was able to very efficiently schedule a job through and see uh, through different filtering processes or what tools he had enabled on the schedule board to figure out who's available, um, you know, making sure that we're staying up on top of our utilization, making sure that we have the appropriate team members or equipment scheduled to a job. And then we walked through the capacity of what can be done from a mobile, right? The different tabs that we have accessibility to, the different data points that we're able to record, things that are going to be important, uh, not only today for proof of work and something to send over to your customer for, but for everything down the line, any new service items that may open up or different streams of revenue. And we have, a, again, to stress, 50 plus different micro verticals. Um, I don't think any of our customers use our system completely identical to each other. The big thing here that we focus on in our deployment process is really understanding how your team will use it, right? Because ultimately we understand in the field services and general service industry is that user adoption is paramount, right? When you're talking about having a new system, you have to think about the change management and that ties back around to, it has to be easy to use and it has to have all the information that we need, right? So it's, it's all about a process of understanding what do you need to see and what do we, what should we uh, hide, right? show you the information you need, 
hide what's going to be irrelevant or that you don't. So that's a big part is just creating that simplicity. So looking at some of these different case studies here, I just want to hammer home some of these different takeaway points, right, from industry to industry. I mean, we look at everything from Australia Beverage Corporation, who's providing service and maintenance on very high, uh, high tier equipment, right? They, they're making sure that whenever one of their machines goes down in let's say a, a corporate building that they're working at, that they have a timely response, right? That speed is very important. They need to dispatch someone out quick and they need to have everything they need to get the job done so they don't walk through that office twice to some grumpy people who haven't had their coffee. That's a dangerous scenario. That's arguably probably worse than beware of dog. Right? And then we have things like solar and the ability to have 30% of your time back from back end efficiency. Right? What would you do if you had 30% of your administrative time given back to you? What, what, what would you be able to do with that time? These are the things that we want to be able to give back to you so you can focus on growing your business. Last one I'll touch on here is this utilization, because that is, I know we talk about it quite a bit, but that utilization is huge. Think about the value of being able to add in an extra job per team member per week. And that's on the low end, right? Just one extra job. What is that gonna do for being able to clear up your queue? Especially when folks are thinking about increasing headcount to be able to keep up. Well, what happens when you find out that now you can actually handle much larger service load with the same amount of team members. Saving an entire headcount is a pretty powerful thing to be able to do. Being able to understand actually when you do need to grow. And then being able to handle different team sizes. And I'm sure you've been able to see with Ben's demonstration on the schedule board that managing different regions, I mean, we have customers that are global. We have customers that, uh, get down to the nitty gritty of a, of a specific metropolitan area and they need to uh, dissect something by a neighborhood or, you know, uh, certain square blocks type of thing. And then we have customers that dispatch technicians across state lines, right? The ability to be able to see and manage your area properly is going to be key. Scale indefinitely with this system. All right. Um, so I think this has been a, a great demonstration here. Um, if there's any additional information that anyone would like to be able to discuss further or perhaps see a more detailed demonstration with a few different focal points that might be a little bit more specific to your vertical or industry, I would encourage you all to reach out to either myself, Ivan Zaitz, or any of my other colleagues on this slide here, including Ben Castles, who is so kind as to run through that demonstration. Alejandro, I wanna thank you as well for inviting us and, and having this outlet to be able to share our tool with, uh, with your colleagues as well. So thank you for this invitation here. Um, I'll pass it back over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we have no questions at this time but your information you know, has been now provided to our customers. We do appreciate everybody's attention today. Uh, we've got a lot of good support over the last few weeks over this. And, and, and again, thank you for, uh, to Next Service, to Ivan and Ben for their excellent presentation today. Uh, folks, we, we're gonna start wrapping up, but uh, we'll, you will receive an invitation for next week's webinar, as well as a recording of this a webinar will be posted in our YouTube page. So have a great weekend and we'll see you guys soon.